how long, how many years have you been working on this estate altogether? <laughs> Since we moved here like 26 years ago, I just reclaim one section of yard every year. This year it was across the back. Um, it's just one section at a time. So it's taken me 25 years and I've done it mostly all myself. Now Dave's excited about it. He's helped, he built this box for me. Um, I tell him what I want and he does it. <laughs> I like that much better than That's doing it all myself. Good teamwork. <laughs> yep. If you don't have room for a garden or if you want really good um, returns, I've used these green boxes. They're called earth boxes. I've used them for years and years. You can Google them. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them straight from the earth box place. They have a reservoir in the bottom and a pipe that you just fill every day that keeps a reservoir and then they feed the plants from underneath. You're going to want to put little time-released fertilizers in them so that you're, they're nourishing because if you have that much water it's going to drain all the nutrition out of the soil. So you need little packets of fertilizer in it. But I grow, this, this is my basil, it's just about had it, but it was thick and full all through the summer and over here I planted rosemary in that and I got the most beautiful kale this year out of these. Just huge and beautiful kale. Delicious. So you can grow as much kale as you need in one of these because you cut it down it grows back. Cut it down it grows back. Uh, one, one year I planted bush beans. I planted them in on the 4th of July in one of these boxes and I was eating beans in four weeks. They went from seed to eating beans in four weeks in one of these boxes. So they're really great to have herbs near your home, near your house, or they're just great to use to grow anything in. And they've been worth the expense because we've had them for years and years and years and years and used them, utilized them. I usually have them on my deck and do all my herbs in it and just walk out. I was going to say, they make a great little herb garden because they could just be close to the back Super. door. You step that's, out and grab what you need. That's, that's where they are. When or I, your cherry tomatoes. Them. Would cherry tomatoes grow in this? Yeah, anything would grow in it. Okay. They come with a chart that tells you how to space them apart and they come with a little cover that, that keeps the soil mo moist. It's like a shower curtain, a big shower. I mean, not a shower curtain, a shower cap. You know, it's got the elastic around it. So it comes with that and it comes with a planting chart. So just look up earth boxes if you're interested. Welcome to my garden. This is um, where I find peace and it's been kind of crazy <laughs> this summer. And when I engage in the craziness, I feel fear. And when I come into my garden and realize that there's peace all around us and we have to connect to that peace. So this is my piece and it's kind of a cool time of the year to come see the garden because um, I could just tell you about it in the spring but now you can see that we grow things vertically. And if you want to come in here you can see that spaghetti squash love to go vertical as you can see <laughs> they're hanging from the roof and we've already processed a whole bunch of them and in this wall there were um, over here it was all the butternut squash. The tomatoes are over on this side and it's not unusual for our tomatoes to grow 10 to 12 feet tall. If you pinch off the little suckers that grow in between um, the little suckers that grow in between the crotches of the branches you can grow them and grow them and grow them. But we have lots of beautiful tomatoes still ripening and it's supposed to freeze but I I have found that if we have dense leaf foliage over the top of them a lot of times it they they just keep going and and these green ones I've taken whole branches I've taken whole bushes of tomatoes and hung them upside down in my basement and had them ripen and been delicious so you can do that too the leaves will turn black but the tomatoes will ripen so that's something you can do. We've got a lot of green tomatoes still, so I'm probably going to be doing that. Um, another thing that I love, 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 you can see this patch here. Well, two months ago, it was unbelievable. The nasturtiums and the cosmos, and the cosmos volunteered from last year, and they were massive. So if you walked in this little section, it was just vibrant with every kind of color you can imagine. So I love my nasturtiums. Nasturtiums this year have been in every color, in every shade, and they are bug deterrents. They're also very edible. So if you took these flowers and put them in your 
salads. They're not only beautiful, but they taste like peppery, like watercress. Um, and so we've got every color you can imagine in this garden. So I recommend these. Throw them in the ground, they grow crazy, and in the fall, you can see they're just enormous. So this is what we call our, our white house because I took an old garage frame. You know how you put the canvas over and you have the garage frame? I had a neighbor who was giving it to DI. So I took this and took a week and leveled it and concreted it in and we grow different things, we rotate. So this year it was squash, last year it was melons. This is one of our favorite features is the grape vines. Now we cut them back because we have rabbits and this is their favorite food. They love grapes. So on this side, they're table grapes. And on this side, they're juicing grapes. So today I will be harvesting and juicing grapes. But as you walk through here and take a whiff, when I just smell this, you can see up here, they just hang. And they're, and they're really sparse right now. About a month ago, if you came in here, it was just massive hanging grapes. So it's super fun. Well, we've been through the gate of the secret garden. My family loves this because this wall is just massive grapes, so you have to come through this iron gate to get into the box garden, which is about the only place in the entire yard that is full sun all the time. Um, we are talking about growing melons up. If, as you can see here, they hang like orbs. It's like coming from another planet. So on both sides, there are these melons hanging. We've stopped watering so that they'll become sweeter. So some of the leaves are dying off, but the melons are hanging on and they hang on until they're ripe. And when they fall, they don't splat. They just fall. Really? Uh-huh. And here's, a, here's more on this side. And um, the tomatoes we grow, this is our favorite place to grow these uh, sun sugar tomatoes that are super, super, we put them in our, our roasted vegetables last night. They're sweet beyond description. So they grow like 10 feet tall out of the top and over the sides. If you pinch them, if you pinch the little suckers, they will grow forever and ever. So now they're really taken off and we have to reach really high to grab the fruit. Um, everything is still kind of producing. We've still got zucchini going and yellow squash growing that have grown out into the path. And <clears throat> again, more nasturtiums. One of my favorite parts of the garden is um, over here we have black lace, elderberries, we have gooseberries and three big currant bushes that just produce massively. <clears throat> and we have a little bench in there that we come and meditate on in the shade underneath these black lace elderberries. It's just a peaceful, peaceful place. These are Trex posts that we got as seconds for like $10 each. And we've created a, a level garden here with raspberries and all kinds of things. The deer got in here and totally ate our strawberries, but they'll be back strong next year. Put our peppers and okra. Over here were beans. We pulled lots of it, lots of it already. But we had to put this, these tarps back here because the white fence would just fry everything. So I put dark green tarps that I'll be taking down probably today. This is what we do with it, with the boxes we don't plant in. We plant um, Sudan grass in that one over there. It's also bunny food, but it also nourishes the soil so you don't have <clears throat> fallow fields that they lose the minerals. This is buckwheat. I let it grow crazy because I'm going to take the little seeds off of it and plant it again next year. So buckwheat is another it, it nitrogen, brings nitrogen to the soil and enriches the soil. And as it, it's called a green manure. So your soil is being enriched. So you're essentially letting these boxes rest. Am I understanding that right? Before yes. you... and planting green manure in them so that when we till it in, it will be already have nutrition in it. We won't have to buy manure or whatever, but we do have rabbits too. So we fill those with rabbit manure. So our deal this year was to try and save as many seeds as we could. We saved tomato seeds, um, <clears throat> cantaloupe seeds. We didn't save as many as we hoped to, but we're learning. <laughs> we're learning how to save seeds because if you go to buy seeds, they're getting more and more expensive every year. 
So that's another thing. Um, this is October. It would be a really good idea to stock up on seeds right now because of the way things are. They're bound to go up more and more, and it's a good thing to have those seeds on hand. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go through our seeds today. This is, if I had to do one garden and one garden only, it would be this little garden here. This is my greens garden. And in a little section, I've sectioned it off into three by three feet, three by two and a half feet. And the plant, this is where I plant my greens. And you can plant greens and have them sweet all year long if you put a shade cloth over it. So this is my kale that I'm gonna just fertilize the heck out of and it will come back in the spring. So kale keeps coming back if you cut it. So it didn't ever go to seed because we kept cutting it and eating it. The chard, same thing. Um, my spinach patch is long gone. This is the perfect time of year. The perfect time of year to, to plant spinach and kale. So my best spinach garden I ever had was when I let the spinach, I planted a late crop, let it go to seed, and right before, when it all dried out and was gross, I just shook the seeds. And the next spring, like as soon as the sun shines, as soon as the ground is not frozen, you'll have a huge box of spinach. And it was massive, thick spinach. So then I started reading and I went, oh, oh. now's the time to plant spinach, chard, and garlic. So get your spinach seed, find a little, if you don't have a little patch, look how small this patch is. And this, one of these patches feeds my family because if you keep, if you cut it down, it will come back and come back and come back and come back. So it doesn't bolt over the summer and go bad. You just keep it going all summer. This did not and this did not. So the kale didn't and the chard didn't. The spinach did when it got too hot. You can buy slow bolting spinach, but I didn't this time. So I had spinach in this box that served us for months and months and arugula in this box that was too hot for us to even like. <laughs> So we didn't really utilize the arugula. We learned we don't like it that much. But I'm gonna replant these um, in the next week. So you'll plant just this much space mm -hmm. and you fill it clear in mm -hmm. with the seed. So mm -hmm. it's not like little neat rows. Mm -mm. I just sprinkle you just it. sprinkle it mm -hmm. and just let it come up as it will. And then mm -hmm. the, the key is to keep it cut back. Mm -hmm. Cut it back when it's this big. So you know that you buy baby spinach in the stores. So you cut it back and cut it back and it just comes and comes. The same with the kale, we had kale all summer long, just cutting it back and cutting it back. You can see that now when, when the weather gets crazy, um, it gets kind of leathery. So I haven't cut it back lately because it gets kind of leather and bitter, but if I cut that down to stubs right now and then fertilize it, it'll come back in the, in the spring. So you won't have to reseed it? No. Interesting. No, I've had, Every year I've had kale come back. Huh. This down here is a pars parsley patch. So you see, it's gone to seed, and I'll just shake these out, and this thing will be massive parsley next spring. It'll just be full of parsley, and it's beautiful, healthy parsley. My rabbits love it, but we love it too. So you can dry it, use it, but parsley is very perennial. It'll come back and back. So I have my work cut out for me this, this fall. Um, we don't we can't get enough greens we eat greens every day we put them in our shakes you can freeze them they freeze beautifully you can dehydrate them i just dehydrated a bag this big and got this much <laughs> but you think one scoop in your shake is the equivalent of a huge handful of greens so greens are one of the most important things we can eat one of the healthiest things we can eat so you never can have enough and then your garlic you plant right now this is when you plant it you just take those individual bulbs and stick them in the ground and in the spring you'll have these beautiful garlic plants that you wait until about july they don't har you don't harvest them until about july when they dry out and then you harvest these beautiful garlic i have compost bins that we, com we, we compost the weeds that we pull and the excess from the garden <coughs> and how do you care for these like is this just an all my All husband, summer. yes, and we're low right now, so we put bunny poop in here. <laughs> and all the garden stuff that got too big or too rotten, we pile it in and the greens and the weeds, and then he tills it and rotates it. So this bin was built, I built it 
years ago because um, I found it on in a magazine and I loved it. So what you do is when it starts to rot, you dump it into that one and so it's aerating. He uses a small tiller to break everything up so it, it he can get compost in a couple of months. Massive amount of compost. So we're going to start that again real soon because we got to clean out our bunny pen. These posts are $10 each. They're Trex posts. They come in three different colors, gray, dark brown, and peanut butter. <laughs> And we've used them for fences, to build a fence with over there, behind a, um, the hammock park. Um, we're trying to replace our wooden... Look at this place, they have four foot, four foot sections of the highest quality trucks for five dollars each. So if you were to buy a 12 foot piece, it would probably cost you around sixty dollars. But you can buy a four foot piece for five dollars. <laughs> So if you times that by three, you're spending $15 instead of 60. So I'll show you that. What we do here is we buy the um, cedar posts also. The cedar posts are $5 that are four by four. And we put those inside these posts so that we have something to screw into. So this is screwed into the cedar because it doesn't stay very well if you just screw it into the plastic. So these are composite plastic that will never rot, never wear out. And this box here will be, it's supposed to be my winter garden so that I, I was supposed to plant the greens oh, a month and a half ago and they would be winter worthy. So I'd have to just cover that box. Now it's gonna be my spring garden. So I'm gonna fill it with dirt. This is my favorite dirt, it's organic millers. And it's cheap, it's only $2 a bag at Lowe's. And I'll fill that with that and put some compost in there and plant my greens and my um, garlic in here and, and back there. So in the spring, I'll have a massive amount of greens. So I'm excited about that. And when you plant that, you don't have to cover that, your spring garden. You don't have to put a cover over it because it likes the moisture of the snow and the rain. It doesn't care about the cold. So in the spring, it'll just pop out. So that's my new spring garden. Pit is a great place for parties. So Tam brings her friends back here and they just have a blast. And um, I actually built this swing by myself. Not one person helped me at all. I dug three foot holes, put concrete in. I braced it with rebars. I, I did it all. Not one person helped me. How did you learn to do that? I saw pictures. I, if I find a picture in a magazine, I figure out how what I like and how I can do it. So I get seconds, my posts are seconds, so that I can afford them, and then I just go to it. And it brought it out. So he took the tracks, those posts, and huh. cut them in half and built a bench out of them. No way. <laughs> he built that one and this one out of the tracks, just cut in half. So you're just reclaiming other people's cast offs. Yes. And kind of repairing what's broken. Yes. We grew this hammock park from seed. <laughs> <laughs> it was originally for Taya because she wanted a high tower and I bought all this, these 6x6 um, six six post seconds. They were only $12 each because they were seconds. And I said, well, you're too old for a high tower. How about we do a little hammock thing? So I did one hammock and then it said, no, you need one more. And then when I put that in, it was like, no, you need one more. So we have this beautiful hammock part that has uni united our family more than anything else we've done. And why is that? How? We come out here and it's it <sighs> creates such a peaceful feeling and it's in the deep shade. So I was out here in 102 degrees, which I can't tolerate, but it was in the deep shade and I got actually more adapted to the heat because of this hammock park. And then on Sundays, we eat out here in the hammock parks. We just relax and talk. There's no other place where you can just sit in a, you know, you could sit in a chair, but it's, this is just lulls you into peacefulness. So it's a marvelous park. I hate to see it taken down. It's been the best thing we've ever done for our family. The best thing by far we've ever done for our family. And yesterday, if I can't find Taya, I'll come out here and she'll be in a hammock reading, um, texting, but it's, it's been the best thing we've ever done ever built. We're working on our deck right now. We took the whole deck down. 
Dave and I are making plans together. It's brought, COVID's brought us, our family closer together than, than anything. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that I can back, come back here and find the peace. And well, this conference was magnificent. <laughs> um, we come back here and listen to conference talks. As long as we learn to listen to the spirit and not to the fear. A lot of craziness going on, but the spirit whispers peace and that's that's where we find it. So I'm grateful for this oasis of peace.